It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, and our mission is to inspire. Our mission is to empower, and our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you inside you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Adrian. She's in the building and she'll be talking about brand positioning. Like, no, seriously, brand positioning, how you can stand out in a crowded market. What's going on, Adrian? How are you? I am great. Shay, this is awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for being here. You know, there's some episodes I can't wait for, right? It's like this moment, this time is for me, and I believe this episode is for every entrepreneur that's watching, that's listening right now, because I'm going to ask her the first question, which is, what in the LL Cool J is a brand, <laughs> right? Because brand means different things to different people. So let's get Adrian's definition of brand and why is branding so important from her view of the world for all of us entrepreneurs. Well, first, I want to start off with most people think branding is a logo, and it is part of it, but it is not necessarily just your logo. Brandon is your voice about you and also your company. You know, I've had a chance to know you now for a little over a year, and you've been very consistent at your own brand. Take a moment and talk about how does someone stand out in a crowded market? Because that's a pretty big, bold claim. They're, they're Okay, they're looking below right now and they're reading your bio, okay? They're Googling you now and checking you out. But you've got this big, bold claim. Look, brand positioning, how to stand out in a crowded market. Take a moment and break that down for us, please. So um, basically how you stand out in the crowded market, Shay, one is it is being consistent. The other on top of being consistent it's your look, it's your sound. You know, a lot of times we get so caught up with looking at other brands and we try to mimic it, opposed to, you know, understanding what is our target audience? You know, understanding what are our buyer's persona? What is it that they are looking for? And you structure your whole brand around that. I know with me, as far as the seven figure boss, you know, I created a brand that was not only pleasing to me, because when I think about it, you know, I was just like, I think from the eyes of a consumer. And when I'm looking at through the lens of the consumer, I'm like, okay, what is it that they're looking for? And when I figure out what is it that they're looking for, Shay, I'm not going to lie. I go in there and I do my market analysis and my research on my competitors because I like to know what I'm up against, you know, and I like to know what are the good points? What are the bad points? You know, a lot of times we may go in and we just look at a bad review, but no, I want to know what is it that they're so great at it? Not necessarily to mimic, but I want to be better. You know, take a moment if you would, because one of your, your skill sets, and I love the seven figure boss, we're going to ask her, what is a seven figure boss? Because some folks might want to know. Well, matter of fact, let me ask that question. Seven figure boss. Take a moment to talk about what is a boss these days. Again, okay? and again, I'm not trying to be funny, but boss means different things to different people. So when you use the word boss from your perspective, what one is a boss? And number two, what are some things that a boss does in order to have their business grow so they can be a seven figure earner? Right. Well, one of the great things with a boss, you got to be a great leader. Um, without being um, a great leader and also be a great listener because you got to be able to listen to your team. You got to be able to also have influence, you know, to get your team excited and, to, and pumped and ready to work for you. You know, the seven figure boss is more than money. You know, it's also a mindset because when you think about it, it's what you think about is what you bring about. And if you have that poverty mindset, that's what's going to show up for you. 
you know, you're one of the few folks that I get a chance to have conversations about because while she's a seven figure boss and she's day, she's talking about branding. She's probably a genius at sales and at marketing, by the way. Don't let her fool you. Don't let her fool you. So she and I get to have this conversation <laughs> around, you know, sales to generate revenue. And the reason I asked that question is you have B.R.A.N.D. She has brand and then she has positioning. Talk about the importance from your view of the world of have, using brand positioning to drive not only sales so you can serve people, but also be paid with your worth. Because that's that's one of the challenges folks have today is being paid with their worth. Right. So when we're dealing with brand, your B is you got to have belief in what you're selling. Because if you don't have belief in what you're selling, you know, a lot of my consumers are, you know, they're a mixed group is men and women, but more so women. Women can tell if we're being sold to or if we're also just offering something great, something that is worth working with. And then my R is, is, is standing for being resilient. You know, you gotta know how to be able to have this bounce back. You know, when we go into this world, now we're all in this technology world. We're a part of this, this social media game. And a lot of times, you know, we get, you know, a little, uh, how can I say it? I don't like to say it, but I'm going to say it, but hurt. We get a little but hurt when we looking at the followers and the likes and, and we're wondering why people are not following and liking our posts, opposed to getting caught up in the connection and the people that are actually investing in our services you know, sometimes it can take us out of the game. So you got to be able to, to know how to be resilient. And then um, your B, your R, your A, your A is, Shay, you got to get in action. You mm. got to get in action. And a lot of people don't realize when you become an entrepreneur, this is not something where you can press on the gas today and put the brakes on tomorrow. Being part of um, in this whole world and branding your business in this social media and marketing world, you got to stay in action every single day and stay relevant, you know, because your clients are like, where are you at? You know, so put something out every single day. And then you got your in. Your in is just people need you. We have services out here where people need us. Shay, I ain't gonna lie. I said, uh, hey, Shay, we have one of the best businesses out here, baby. So when people talk about they don't like salespeople, guess what? Without sales, where's the world gonna be today? So I love that I'm in a position where I'm constantly selling, constantly building new relationships. Sales is not a dirty word for me, by the way. And then, you know, you got your D. It's just um, do it. Do it. Never give up. You know, and a lot of times we give up when we're so close to that blessing. And it's like, no, keep it moving. You know, when you're branding um, yourself and you're branding your business, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. You know, um, one of the things that I do know is yeah, my brand has been consistent with me moving out of being a hairstylist into teaching people how to open up successful businesses. I know in the beginning, a lot of people used to sleep on me. They used to sleep on me because they would think, oh, she's nothing but a hairstylist. But I'm like, okay, how do you explain me not only having a profitable business, but I've had a sustainable business for over 19 years. I've worked with two companies that I've helped them become Fortune 500 companies um, with also their branding and marketing. So I, I know my stuff. I know my stuff and how, how to make those, those coins, Shay, as they say. <laughs> you know, I love it. And, and they're listening and saying, Shay. I'm looking over her shoulder. She got it together, okay? She came ready. She looks prepared. Look at her setup. Like, the brand is on point. Um, when was the time maybe for, for Adrian where she had to use resilience, where, where things didn't go the way she was hoping they would go? She asked her about a time where she might have got hit with the punch she never saw coming, and, and she had to bounce back. She talked about resilience. I like the brand, but, you know, I, I asked her that question, Adrian, and I hope you'll, you'll be 
transparent with our audience. A lot of our seventy percent of our audience, Adrian, they're they're dualpreneurs. Um, and, and, and there's no shame to that. I don't want anybody to feel like, oh my gosh, no. It's okay to be a nine to five millionaire. It's okay to take care of your family. It's okay to be involved in organizations. It's okay to take care of the kids. It's okay to run everybody around. So they want to know, Adrian, number one, where was the time that, that you had to overcome some odds, the things didn't work out that you had to bounce back from? Because many of those folks, they're like myself and others, it's happened for them. Mm-hmm. Well, Shay, you actually are part of this. <laughs> And you probably don't know how much you have played such a huge role in my life. Because I know when I first came into this, everybody knew me as the six-figure hairstylist, you know. And it was honestly having to get into the mental space that, Adrian, you are more than hair. You could coach more than hairstylists. I will never forget the time when I shared with you the story how someone had said to me that I could never coach their corporate clients. And I'm not going to lie. I got off that call and I cried for a little bit. And then it was like, uh, girl, get it together. You have worked with two major companies that have helped them build an empire. How dare you allow for this one situation to, to just knock you off your game? And I had to realize, you know what? That person did not define who I was. And what ended up happening, not only did I go viral on that person page, but I went viral on my page for the things that he said that I could not work with the corporate clients. And I just remember when I shared that story with you and you was just like, no, you can work with anybody. And I'm like, wow, he has belief in me, you know? So I'm like, if he had belief in me, my son has belief in me. I was like, I could take on anything. And that's what inspired me to do the Great American Speak Off. Cause my son was like, you know, he saw me when I, I broke down and had those tears because I said, oh, my God, I am stepping into a world because I've been a global educator and a regional manager and platform artist for 19 years on millions of stages, domestic and international. And now I'm like, okay, Adrian, you getting ready to walk into these rooms and start talking to these doctors. Everybody going to be listening to your East Coast slang, you know, and they're going to judge you on your look and the way that you talk. And I had to work through all the mentals to get it done. And um, I was like, you know what? What is the biggest way for me to do it than when I did the Great American Speak Off? Because I said I'm competing with people that are not like me. You know, thanks so, for sharing. Thanks for being so, so transparent. I'm wondering, what's your, how do you juggle it all? Um, I'm, I'm a primary caregiver. I know that you're a primary caregiver. I know that you uh, have a husband. I know you have children. I know you also are, are fighting our kids by now. You're fighting in a very competitive environment, which is the hair industry. And you've been able to stand above that and transition and use the best practices and in industries all across the world now. And so the question is, What's your secret to, I don't know if there's such a thing called time management. What's your secret to, to juggling it all? Uh, two part question. One, what's your secret? And number two, is there such a thing as having a balance life? There's no such thing as ever having balance. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, when I hear people say that, oh, balance, balance, balance. I'm like lies and trash you tell. You cheating on somebody. Somebody getting cheated on. Um and I had to just learn how to take my family on this journey with me, you know, and, and, and they know that I got a goal. They know that I got a goal. They know the legacy I want to leave. Um, and I, honestly, I had to stop feeling guilty. I was feeling guilty. And it's like, you know what? It is what it is. My dad knows that I love him. He know that I, I, I get the best care for him. You know, my, my dad is just as dapper 
You know, same thing yes, with my is. husband, my kids, my grandkids. I was just so shocked this last weekend. I said, you know what? I'm going to take off Monday and I'm going to take my grandson to the aquarium. And Adrian, you are not going to be feeling guilty that you should be at home working and you're going to turn off your phone. Now, I ain't going to lie. That was the first for me because it's so hard for me to get out of work zone. But you know what? I said, it's always going to be there. Mm, always going to be there. So true. And you were an inspiration to me when we were at your event several months ago now, and you were going through something and you were able to have your dad there. And I thought about the same thing as a primary caregiver. I was like, Ooh, uh, so it encouraged me to continue doing what I'm doing because we still have to not only be a provider, but we also got to continue doing what we're doing now. So uh, I acknowledge you for the champion that you are and for the winner that you are, because you're truly amazing. And she really is. I, I say that authentically. Y'all know I don't say it about everybody that comes on here, but she's she's someone that's a fighter. And if you're out there and you're watching right now, you want someone in your corner, not only they can teach you, not only they can make you look good. That's just one piece of it. Branding and making sure that you have the right messaging is one piece. But when she adds on the messaging and the marketing to the branding and put it in sales, I will say it's just not fair. It really isn't. Um, here's the question I have, though, for you. What does success look like for you these days? I mean, for where you are now, where you are in your life. Uh, you said it's not all about the money, although she is the seven figure boss. You can go figure that out. What does success look like for Adrian for where she is in her life today? Wow. So um, you saw how I made the big step where I resigned from one of the companies um, that I was working for. So now I'm all in with the seven figure boss you know, inspiring other entrepreneurs to just make it happen and remove all the excuses. I'm like, Shay, I should have had this a long time ago, you know, but mm -hmm. it was excuse after excuse, you know, and I said, you know what, opposed to me using my father and my son who has Tourette's and high functioning autism, I said, opposed to me using them as an excuse to not get it done, I'm going to use them as an excuse to get it done. You know, so my goals right now, of course, is multi. You know, um, I told my dad, before you leave this earth, you're going to see your daughter as a multi. You know, um, and I'm excited about that. You know, I got the seven figure boss second summit which Shay is one of my phenomenal speakers that's coming up um, July 9th. Also, you know, um, as me and you've been talking, you know this fire mastermind that's going to be popping in November. Um, but it's just, it's going to continue. You know, I see my brand growing, um, honestly getting bigger than I ever imagined. You know, I, I, I knew it was going to pop. You know, um, because like I've I've always oh I've always been able to make money. You know, I've never ever felt the pressures of a recession. Praise God, because I've always been I've always thought outside the box. You know, um, and ways to be creative and to generate more finances. It don't scare me. If anything, mm -hmm. it pumps me and um, motivate me even more. So when I constantly hear everybody talking about this recession, this recession, this recession, you know, I even tell my husband, I'm like, we're not putting up, you know how people be having all of the, um, like the bills, the balances and the checks and all of that. I says, no, opposed to worrying about what's always going out. I want us to be focusing on what's coming in. You know, so. so so well said. Such a blessing. Um, and I do believe as a seven figure boss, what really attracted me to the brand other than you and you know, you're important, but I like the mission. Right. Because when you have more money, you can have more meaning in the world. You can do more good. Uh, when you have more income coming in, you certainly will have more impact. 
Amen. I believe that. Amen. And you can make so much of a difference when you have a lot of dollars associated with it. Um, so I like the seven figure boss because it allows us to fund the causes that we believe in when we can generate revenue as entrepreneurs by serving other people. So I just want to applaud you, acknowledge you. I wish there was a seven figure man club or something like that because it's just so cool. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. Um, but, but, but we do have a segment here. Let me be serious. We do have a segment here called Today is my January 1st. Now, for those folks that tune in at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single night, you can go and say those words you wait to say. Today is my January 1st. That's right, your family. Today is your January 1st. And for those folks that are new, welcome to the program. We're glad to have you here. Today is my January 1st. Is our personal mantra at the Happy Entrepreneur Show. It means that you get a fresh start. Today is my January 1st means you get a new beginnings. It means your past no longer equals your future that you don't have to wait till December 31st at 11 59 PM after a couple drinks. I'll say that and be able to say, I'm ready to get going. No, no. Today is your January 1st. So a happy new year to all of you out there. And so my question to Adrian is this, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And what message you have to encourage and inspire folks that are listening right now? Now they got to go take some action. Yes. So without having success, you gonna see some failure. You know, it, it, it's what you do with it. Is if you stop or you keep going, you know, you got to be able to have, you know, like I love my grandson, you know, he fall on the ground, he jump back up and he get back up and he try it all over again. It's the same thing with us. You got to continue to push and trust me. It's, it's like giving birth to a beautiful baby. You wait and it's nine months, you know, and then you're able to see what God has blessed you with. Same thing for your business. You just got to keep on working. And you know what? You may have to rewrite your plan. You know, like he said, January 1st, guess what? You starting all over again. So if you got to rewrite it, rewrite it. Just don't stop. I love it. Never, ever stop. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep grinding. Keep moving forward. Um, What type of clients, as we come down the home stretch, are you, is your firm working with these days? So for folks that are listening, she's going to first tell you the type of clients she's looking to attract, she's looking to work with. That's number one. And number two, how can folks best connect with you. I know you always have an event. You're always having things going on. So they want to know how can they best connect with you? Yes. So, um, first of all, you guys can connect with me on every single social media platform, website, everything is through the seven figure boss. And, um, the word seven is spelled out is not the number. And also the, the ideal clients, the clients that I work with are clients that are pretty much lacking confidence and guidance, knowing that they can scale to a six figure plus business. You know, if you're struggling and you've worked with so many other coaches and you're like, why am I not making the money? And you sit back and you look at your brand and your brand is not representing who you are. Yeah. Come and check me out. There, you heard it from the one and only, the Adrian Valquez is on the other side. Check her out at the Seven Figure Boss. Make sure you connect with her. Make sure you meet with her. Tune in. And let me also say, Adrian, thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate you. I know you can always make more money. You can do that any given day, but you can never make more time. And so you've given us the most precious resource you have which is your time. And thank you all of you for watching. Thank you for being part of the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. I want you to know that today is your January 1st. And because of that reason, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name, for those folks that might have forgot, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, We'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember this though. Remember this time is long. It really is life on the other hand. Well, it's very, very short. So you got to live in that moment. You got to make it count. God bless me. Wish you success. Thanks a lot, Adrian. See you later. Thank, Thank all you. all for tuning in. We appreciate you.